And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. That's in parentheses all in my Bible. I didn't put it there. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. God will send you somebody. I hear people say all the time, uh, why didn't God tell me myself? Because you wasn't listening. Didn't you read the scriptures? You're not listening. The Bible says in 32, it says, And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song. One, in other words, that's a pleasant song. I believe that's why people, some people like jazz, because it's so soothing. And it's not really confrontational. And that's why they don't like rap. Because rap is so bold. Gospel rap is bold. It's in your face. The, the, the words are clear. It's too, it's, too, it's too rough. It's too hard for me. I need something soft and lovely. But that's what the scripture says. And lo, they are unto them as a lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice. Like, like the ones, I don't want to talk about any preachers. That's not why I'm here. That's not my position. That's not my job. But at least in this setting, is that, oh man, you're just too strong. You're too firm. You're too this. Let me help you understand something. <laughs> God forbid that you get in a car accident and you go to the doctor. In order for your life to be saved, they have to crack your ribs or something. But because this doctor has a problem with seeing blood or he's so passive, he don't want to do it and you die. Let me help you understand something of what I've come to understand about preachers and teachers, the gifts in Ephesians 4. God is going to give you what you need, even if you, even if you don't want it. Your need <clears throat> supersizes, supersedes, excuse me, your need supersize your want to God. He will give you what you need versus what you want in so many cases. How do I know that? Because them high inch nails didn't feel good going through his flesh. That crown of thorns wasn't something he wore because he wanted to look cool or be in style. You know what I'm saying? He didn't, he didn't bear that cross to be cute. He didn't inspire 40 men to write this Bible because he didn't have nothing to do. He knew that because Adam and Eve fell, that there would be a need for us, like when he went through Samaria. He must needs go through Samaria because Jerusalem, I mean, excuse me, Jews did not go through Samaria to get to Jerusalem. It's just not something they did because they didn't have any dealings with them. But because there was a woman there that needed to hear the gospel or an experience the gospel, he, he must needs go, just like he gives us what we need. And so often we don't think we need it. Back to being dead again. You can't become alive until you admit, God, I need your help. I cannot do it by myself. I've been trying and trying and trying and trying and trying and trying. I've been doing it myself. And people get, I can't wait, God, taking too long. There don't, ain't no such thing as God taking too long. He's on time. He's always on time. It might not be your time, but he's on time. And the Bible says when you submit and you come to him the way you're supposed to, like the scripture said, they're going to be an exceedingly great army. The scripture said, he said, they will, they will, he says, so I prophesied as he commanded in, in Ezekiel 37, 10, and the breath came into them and they lived and stood up on their feet an exceeding great army. You're either part of the body of Jesus Christ or you're not. Like I wrote yesterday, I hear the spirit of the living God saying that some people need to seem to humble themselves into the mighty hand of God. So that he will exalt you in your season, in your time. Joseph went through a lot. He's got so many examples in the Bible. Joseph, David, Moses, backside of the mountain. I mean, you got to go through to get to. And it's not going to take 40 years. Why do I know that? Because we have the Holy Ghost. We have his spirit in, in us. But you first and foremost have to acknowledge that God breathed on you. He's trying to breathe on you the worth of the living God so that you can have life that, and you can have it more abundantly. There is more. There's always more. I don't care who you are, where you are. There's always more concerning God. And the only way you can live is through Jesus Christ. I have come that they might, that they might have life. Ask yourself, do you have the life that Jesus Christ died for you to have? Or are you just existing? Paying bills, going to work every day and Oh, well, I'll get it one day. I'm going to retire one day. That's why I retired at 30. I cut that, that retirement age in half because when somebody told me, my, my high school counselor said, well, if you work all your life, you can retire at about 60. 
and then you can live. What I want to do at 60 years old? I never agree. The spirit in me never agreed with the plan of this world. Never, never. And it doesn't still. It still doesn't agree. It's, it's contrary. I'm in the world. I'm not of this world. Because I allow God to breathe on me the breath of life. And I'm living for Jesus Christ. And the things that I do and say may not make sense to everybody and everybody. But it makes sense to me and those who, who bear the fruit of the things that God has told us to do. Not saying that I'm special or I'm select, but I humble myself under the mighty hand of God because I want the things that God has for me, and I pray you do too. If you're just existing and you're not living, I, I, go through this word, go through Ezekiel, read the scriptures, and allow God to breathe on you. And back to, I hear the Spirit uh, concerning prophecy. Allow someone to speak the words of life into you. Yes, God can do it directly. Put in the time, put in the work, and God will speak to you directly. He will never leave you, nor will he forsake you, be with you to the very end. But you better be disciplined if you want it to come that way. It, it can come that way. I'm not saying it can't come that way. But prophecy is a gift that God has given to men to speak and be used to edify and to perfect. In the name, let's pray. Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard. I just ask and pray time and time again as we or, or, or wake up every single day, Father God, that you breathe the breath of life into our nostrils and allow us to become a living soul, living for you, Father God, carrying out the things that you've called us to do. Father God, allow them to look past this bald-headed, six-foot-seven, 270-pound person in front of them and allow them to hear you through me, Father God, so they can experience this life that we read about and we talk about, this abundant life, Father God. There are believers, Father God, that's working harder than sinners. Like they back in Egypt again. From the Passover to Pentecost, Father God, we're in that time of where you commanded them to count the Omer. And I pray that people will examine themselves during this time, Father God, that they are in the faith and that it's not in this world, doing the things of this world. People get more excited, Father God, in the name of Jesus, about a person putting a silly ball through a hoop or a person carrying a ball around a grass field, a child game, Father God, that has turned to make people millions of dollars. But that still does not supersede the price that you paid for, for us on Calvary's cross, Father God. I pray that people return to their first love, which is you, Lord Jesus, and that they will seek ye the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus and allow everything else to be added. I thank you for this time, this platform, this season. I know that nothing was done in vain, and I know that someone will be awakened to the truth. I thank you and praise you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray for now and forever. Hallelujah and amen. My name is Sean Henry Scott Sr., I go by the position of an apostle in the body of Jesus Christ. And if you ever need us, feel free to call upon us. May God bless you and have his face continually and always smile upon you. Praise the Lord, everybody. My name is Sean Scott, Sr.